morning and welcome to Physical Science in the AM. I'm your host, Joseph Delka, and today, watch out on the street. It's icy out there. We have a little bit of a weather system. Things are backed up on the Louvain right now. Please drive carefully. You've heard of... Sorry. Anyways, I'll just... Uh, okay, we're going to go over what is a double replacement reaction. It's where two things took place. They're both in compound starts. So, the idea is that A and B took place. It doesn't matter. You want to think of the anions that took place. And I've mentioned that on double replacement reactions, I require you to put the state of matter. A plus B plus A plus gas. One of three things has to happen. Gas is one. Water is one. We're not going to focus on the gas form anymore. So when the H and the TA switch places, you get HOH, water. And I mentioned that I often use HOH instead of H2O. Or a precipitate. And precipitate is a million dollar word for solid. Silver and sodium switch places. So it just so happens that the reaction goes forward because solid is solid. The deeper both aqueous products, you get NR, no reaction. It's been two examples by the name. Everyone has this handout, which you'll be able to use on exam for doing assignments. Uh, on the chart, it says soluble. That means dissolvable or aqueous. It's in water. Low solubility means it's solid. And we went through a few examples of how to use the chart. It's D and E here. It showed the importance of knowing which charge your positive cation. For one chloride, copper two chloride, different results. One gives you a comment. Then we went to predicting, and this is where we left off, and we were right down to some answers. So, what am I doing here for the first one? NA and H switch place. When I put H in the spot, then you get H O. That's water, right? So this one's going to happen. It's not a solid one, it's water. I'm going to write it down as H O H instead of H. I'm going to put a little L because this water is a liquid. Sure. Leave space for balancing. N A and C L. I know this one in my head. My N A positive one, C L minus one. So they combine as N A C L. You're familiar. And if I look it up on the chart, you know this is from being at home with salt with all of the water. It's like, well, it's easy. Anyway, then I look through. Do I need to balance? One NA, one NA. An OH, and this OH. This H. Yeah, everything's balanced. No need for numbers. See my thinking, by the way, by writing out water as HOH? I think of this, instead of H2O, I think of this as the hydroxide group and then the hydrogen group. Sometimes it may be easy to count, not so much. So let's take a look at the next one. So when iron and ammonium change places, I'm going to do some scratch work. So just because I want to know what the charge is. Whether I do this all from the left side of the page or something like that, I gotta figure out what is iron's charge. It's C or three. It's important. So I actually always figure out the charge by looking up the negative, the anion. SO4. That's two minus. I just use my charge. So that means it had to be plus. Ammonium, I gotta look up ammonium. It's NA4. Then 
sulfide and look it up. This is why you have your iron. Smile. Then when it switched spots, I'm thinking, I always think of it as a cat. So success iron and going into different places, what are the new compounds formed? Then we'll look up at the salt. that on the right hand side when I mix a plus one ah, with a minus two what am I going to get? I have to have a two to one ratio for the pump. That means I need brackets. So I'm going to write that down. This ammonia plus one. You like that? Absolutely. I'll look up later. I mean, plus, iron and sulfide, two plus two made it, they just pop together. To work out for me. Yeah. Thanks, you have to follow me. Okay, so I've got my chart. I just moved it a little bit. I gotta take a look. So this is up. Ammonium. Ammonium is one of the ones where you actually don't have to look up anything else. It's one of the first ones. Anything with ammonium is solid. So I can put down EP right now without looking up the actual. But if I look up sulfur, I'll find out that the ammonium doesn't work for me. So I do this. That's an F. If I look this one up, sulfur. Hmm. Iron two plus in here? Nope. It's one of the other. So this is low solubility. So fast. My little F in there. Now that means I have to balance. Well, do I have to balance it? It's all one. It works out just fine. I'm going to pause the video to add in the attendance. Had a question while the video was paused? Why do I put this L in my hand right here? I put that L in there in the way of water. Because it is liquid water in nature. It doesn't make sense to take acid aqueous because it doesn't mean water is dissolved in water. You find you see what I'm saying there? So that's why it's aqueous with other things because they're sodium chloride, for instance, they dissolve in water. That makes sense. Water is water, so we just put the liquid. This isn't happening outside this much room. Yeah. So, what would you do? Well, we're going to assume everything's at room temperature. Okay. I'm not going to try to trace. Okay. And actually, it's more likely in a lab setting, though, that you have aqueous water, gas. Right? Call it steam, right? But, uh, if you're doing something outside, the reaction wouldn't happen because the water wouldn't be able to dissolve the sodium chloride and things like this. So that makes sense. So we're going to assume we have good conditions. So let's take a look at B. So one, what are they? Okay, the potassium, that's a big plus. I'll do my scratch work on this one. And I've got to, and I do this, and I show this explicitly, whether you do it in your head or write it up. You have to know what the charge of each iron is, each iron sheet. That's a K plus. I could look at CO3, which is 2 minus. Strontium, SR, is a 2 plus. 
NO3 nitrate to minus one. And you think to yourself, then the cation group replaced a double replacement. So on the right hand side, when I combine it, <coughs> you know what the question is, two minus so it's perfect. So you want to be that's our PO3, no brackets and everything. It's actually wrong. Go back. Figure this out. K and O3. And we'll figure this out. Now NO3, poor Google there, super bright for that. Nitrate. All things that you come across in the grid level function. So I can already have them. Potassium carbon. Carbon. Not like if you flip an oven, it can be a solid. That's the way you think things work. It's a solid. This is going to happen, right? That means we need to balance it. Yep, we do. Here's why I need to balance it. I've got two K. Here. I think that takes care of everything. I've mentioned this before. When you're balancing with things like NO3 or CO3, don't think of it as three O's and one N. Think of it as NO3 and then I've got NO3 here. It's easy. You can think of it as three O's. Hasn't changed since NO3 was in It can match it. Not big to do more. Okay, sodium chloride, potassium hydroxide. Little switcheroo. Well, let's try it out. Now, Na is a positive one, K is a positive one. Chlorine is a negative one. I'm not going to do the stack with you. Just because I can keep this one in my head. And this is what you're going for. Sorry, this is what you're working for. Okay, plus one with the uh, sodium trades with plus one for the potassium. Okay, the potassium chloride will also be K2L. Sodium hydroxide, NaOA. That's because I would have looked this up on the list, but I retained that in my head as all one. It worked out. Now, I look up on the list chloride with potassium. Oh, it's another. It's soluble. Hydroxide with sodium. I see that it is soluble. There's another way I could have done this. If you recognize that both potassium and sodium are cations from the first column, they're always soluble. So that's another thing. It really only works in group one eyes if you skip looking up those two lines. Recognize that. That makes it quick. Hey, I got two aqueous. Does this reaction actually happen? No. We're going to put NR. It's actually balanced anyway, but it balances itself right there. I'm not going to minimize it. It's just one here. But I do want you to declare no reaction. I'm trying to make it even hotter. Now when I switch spots, I can always tell when the pH is low, I just should be allowed to use the water. And that's important. Don't put H2O, go ahead. I 
k plus and the NO3 minus combine one to one. So I'm going to just put down NO3. I'm going to put water down like that. I'm going to put the little L in right away. This reaction definitely counts. KNO3, if I look up nitrate, or it's a little like this, this is plus and potassium. And this is balanced. Now, I have nothing to show you today. It will practice things. Um, but I'm going to put the uh, worksheets, I'm going to hand them out. You need practice. So, what you're going to work on for the rest of the class is single replacement reactions, but I'm giving them to you in words. We're going to have to come up with, look up what lead is. It's all by itself, so it's just PD. Then zinc and acetate. You're going to have to look up the charges, figure out the proper formula. Now, a single replacement, I don't require you to figure out if it's aqueous or anything. Single replacement. What you do need to do is flip back to your activity series, the list. Is it higher? Is lead higher than zinc? If it is, then do it. So write the formulas for the reactions on the left side of the list. Arrow, arrow. You're going to write down PD plus ZN bracket a ch 3 coo N 2 Arrow. Look at the activity series to see if it can happen. Is lead higher than zinc? Then it will push it out. If the replacement can occur, complete the reaction to balance. If not, put N on. No reaction on the point. That's what you're going to do on this sheet. Got these to the next one that I'm going to hand out to you, you don't have to. is double replacement, what we were just practicing. Same kind of thing. I give it to you in Word. So write the formula of the reactions on the left side. But you can assume that the starting things are aqueous. You don't have to look for them, okay, because I'm not trying to trick you. So everything will be sodium hydroxide, iron, three nitrates, AQ, AQ, once you figure out the formula. Okay. Then write the product on the right side of the arrow, just like we were doing. Figure them up. Figure out the formulas and figure out if it's aqueous or solid, if there's a solid form or water form. Okay. Use the solubility chart to determine what will be solid, what should be aqueous. Uh, I put step four and three. I actually think do that first, then balance if needed. Put NR if it doesn't happen. Right? Okay. That's what we're practicing for the rest of the class.